friends good afternoon and welcome to edusat live lectures dear friends today in world geography through maps we will be discussing about europe to discuss this topic we have with us our subject expert dr b w pandey dr pandey is associate professor in department of geography in delhi school of economics university of delhi without further ado i would like to welcome sir to our studios i can request him to start the lecture welcome sir thank you amrit thank you very much good afternoon friends today we are going to discuss uh, world geography through map and uh, today i will cover europe continent its physical political ecological cultural and socio political aspects of europe continent and uh, in this sequence first of all i would like to mention if you see the europe continent physically physically europe continent it is a it's shape like a peninsula therefore it is known as peninsular continent due to peninsular effect large land mass of the europe continent largely affected by maritime effect perhaps this is the only continent which is affected by maritime effect throughout the year because three sides surrounded by ocean arctic ocean in the north atlantic ocean in the west mediterranean sea in the south also covering the black sea and the caspian sea friends due to maritime effect and also the effect of the westerlies europe continent have unique climatic condition due to due to its unique climatic condition the northern part of europe having rainfall throughout the year with mild temperature southern part of europe rainfall mainly during winter season because of mediterranean effect because of mediterranean climate therefore the economic activities social parameters human development index agricultural index for europe continent is very very high so in the last lecture we had discussed africa and you found that in africa continent because of extreme climatic condition either too hot or too wet they have very poor condition countries are developing in third world while europe continent because its maritime effect very suitable climatic condition mild and humid throughout the year europe continent have very high development level of development human development economic development social development and also there is a well maintained ecological system forest resources rivers and because of humid climate throughout the year europe continent have large number of perennial rivers large number of perennial rivers long size of rivers and i would like to mention that if you see the map this is the only continent having maximum area under plain it's so more than 60% land of europe is plain therefore central and southern part of europe there are plateau and mountains northern part of europe are plain except scandinavian norwegian coast because of the plain areas rivers drain in such a manner that rivers are highly useful for navigation friends it is europe continent where almost all the rivers are navigated 
almost all the rivers are interlinked developed by canals even the cities which are interior of the continent there have been port inland port river port like paris and many other cities in germany throughout the river rhine there are number of river ports dozen of the river ports in france in in germany in poland and many other countries so this is the background and then first of all i would like to mention the fiscal and political map so as a as a physical map you can see european peninsula though entire continent is the shape of peninsula beyond that there are a number of minor peninsulas and i'd like to mention those peninsulas and then we'll see the superimposed with the political map you can learn easily the peninsula and the countries located on this peninsula so this is number 1 is apennine peninsula apennine peninsula number 2 this is called spanish peninsula also called iberian peninsula number 3 this is called brittany peninsula number 4 this is jutland peninsula number 5 is scandinavian peninsula and number 6 this is kola peninsula now with the help of the political map now you can find which are the countries located on these peninsulas so apennine peninsula you can see this is apennine peninsula where the country is italy italy a small country san marino and within the rome the small the smallest country in the world you can say vatican city so italy vatican city and san marino located on the apennine peninsula then we see the iberian peninsula on the iberian peninsula countries are spain and portugal spain and portugal on the iberian peninsula third this is brittany brittany peninsula is the part of france then jutland peninsula over jutland peninsula just north of the germany jutland peninsula this is the country all together group of the islands of the mainland the denmark so denmark located on jutland peninsula and scandinavian peninsula the scandinavian its peninsula the two countries on the peninsula of scandinavia norway and sweden but when we say scandinavian countries so it includes norway sweden finland and denmark also iceland this is geographical area and all these countries all together known as scandinavian countries so scandinavia when we include finland it's called finno scandinavia then this is a kola peninsula kola peninsula lies in russia this peninsula and this water bodies provide the easy accessibility to the sea so impact of water bodies interior of the land the stretch of the water like baltic sea north sea gulf of bothnia gulf of finland this provides easy accessibility to the sea and maritime culture mary culture that enhance the trade economic development 
fisheries, all that. That makes the Europe continent very, very prosperous and rich. Apart from this peninsula, so we discuss first the countries and because of the effect of the peninsula, most of the countries of Europe continent have been sea coast, except a few like Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg and Andorra, few countries in Europe continent or landlocked I would like to mention this is Switzerland, Switzerland and this country small country called Liechtenstein and for Liechtenstein I would like to mention to show you this is the map of the Liechtenstein. It is uh, lies between Switzerland and Austria. Liechtenstein is a country situated between Switzerland and Austria. Very small country, Liechtenstein. Then Switzerland, Liechtenstein, and then you find the country Luxembourg. This is Luxembourg, though it is landlocked among the countries like France, Belgium and Germany, though it is well connected to the sea through the rivers, through the canals. Therefore, being landlocked, there is no landlocked effect in Luxembourg, it is a very rich country. Then this is the country called Andorra, lies between France and Spain on the Pyrenees mountain. So, this is kingdom of Pyrenees, Andorra country. Except these countries, all the countries of Europe continent having sea coast. And these countries are known with its regional name, the group of the countries, it is a form in the regional name. So, I will go first name of the countries, then I will take the regions. So, beginning from Italy, France and between the France and Italy, there is a small country called Monaco. Monaco, but this is a kind of coastal country. Then you find Spain, Spain, then Portugal, we come to the Bay of Biscay, again is Spain, passing to the Spain to France, passing the Brittany Peninsula, enter in English Channel, passing English Channel, Dover Strait, then enter in North Sea, after France, the country Belgium, then Netherlands, friends, Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg, these countries, its major part of these countries are below sea level. Therefore, Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg are together known as low land countries. Netherlands earlier called as Holland, it is low land. So, Holland, Netherlands, the country of dikes, people claim the land by discharging the water of the sea and they occupied the land from the sea. Netherlands, then Germany and above Germany is Denmark. Passing through this, Poland, Poland, then there is a detached land of the Russia, Kaliningrad region, then you find Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia. These three countries, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, lying along the coast of Baltic Sea, therefore, these three countries 
known as Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. These are Baltic states. Then there are Scandinavian countries, Norway, Sweden, Finland and then the largest country of the world, largest country of Asia, largest country of Europe continent is Russia. Then these are the countries in the western and northern Europe, then come to the central Europe, central Europe there are many countries of central Europe which are landlocked. You found in the western Europe, northern Europe only few countries like Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Andorra, there are few Luxembourg, few landlocked countries in the west, but in the eastern Europe and central Europe we have number of landlocked countries like Czech Republic, Czech, Slovak, Austria, Hungary and you find the Belarus and south of Belarus this is Ukraine. Friends, Belarus, Ukraine and Moldova these three countries were detached from USSR from Russia after the division these countries separated from Russia USSR. Then you find the Yugoslavian countries, Yugoslavian countries the country Yugoslavia which divided into almost seven countries. Then you find countries like Croatia, Croatia, Slovenia, Slovenia number 1, number 2 Croatia, number 3 Bosnia Herzegovina, number 4 Montenegro, number 5 Macedonia, number 6 Serbia and again Serbia divided. So, northern Serbia became another country, southern Serbia is another country. This way all these countries all together there were one country, these are all as one country as Yugoslavia. Now, Yugoslavia divided into seven parts. Then in the east you find Romania, Bulgaria, Romania, Bulgaria and Albania. So, Albania, Bulgaria in the south are the Greece. Friends, these uh, countries including Greece, Albania, Macedonia, Bulgaria, these countries also have been a peninsula and these peninsular countries also the same name of the mountain like Balkan Peninsula, the Balkan mountains and therefore, the Greece, Albania, Macedonia all these countries all together known as Balkan states. So, two regional names sounds very much similar I would like to make it clear one is Balkan states that includes Greece, Albania, Macedonia, Bulgaria other one is Baltic states and among Baltic states there are three countries Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. So, Balkan states have four countries, Baltic states have three countries. Then after this location map of the 
political map, there are number of countries which are island countries. Island countries mainly as a map of the Europe continent, you can see there is Iceland and there are British Isles. Among British Isles, there are two country, one is Get Britain called UK, UK, other one is Ireland. Now, I would like to mention that the among the British Island, British Isles, this is British Isles, the there were four kingdoms. The largest one is Britain, that is also called England. So, they, if you say the cursor, this is the boundary, this is the area of England or Britain, this is the largest territory among the British Isles. Number two, Scotland. Scotland, northern part of the British Island, there is Scotland. Third, the Kingdom of Wales, Kingdom of Wales. Number four, Kingdom of Ireland. So, these four kingdoms became united and known as United Kingdom. Later on, Ireland further divided into two parts. So, Northern Ireland is a part of UK and Southern Ireland it became an independent country. So, now Ireland itself in two parts, Northern Ireland is part of UK and main Ireland, the Southern Ireland this is an independent country. So, it's still in the UK there are four kingdoms, England, Wales, Scotland and North Ireland. Altogether, altogether this is called UK and Britain become Great Britain because of United Kingdoms, it is called UK. Then after British Isles, then you find Iceland. Iceland this is another independent country in the part of the Europe continent and major major uh, the Iceland lies on the mid Atlantic ridge in the northern part of Atlantic Ocean. Friends, after this discussion of political map, we will see the its economic map mainly the ports. So, so far we have discussed Europe continent, its physiography and its peninsular effect, climatic effect and we discussed the countries, location of the countries, coastal countries, peninsular countries and regarding this if you have any question, any query you are most welcome. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello friends, today I am going to discuss detail of the Europe continent, the map of Europe continent, discuss geography through map and in this sequence I would like to mention the important ports. You know Europe is a continent which is affecting the entire globe. Global economy, global trade done through the sea routes and this continent has developed the sea routes in the world. Explorations of the other continents, explorations of the sea routes and then I would like to mention the rivers and how rivers are playing a key role in economic development mainly for transportation hydropower and the interlinking the countries from one country to other country rivers are linked with canals. There are so many canals in Europe continent. Before that first of all we will discuss the important ports mainly international sea ports. For this we begin from southern part of Europe sequentially right from the Italy, from Apennine Peninsula, Italy, the most important ports in the Italy you can see in the Mediterranean Sea there is the Rome and Naples. Rome and Naples, another one is Genoa port in the Ligurian Sea and Venice in the Adriatic Sea. Friends, Venice is the city which is developed in sea, in Adriatic water, Adriatic Sea. And because of Mediterranean type of climate, there are well developed horticulture, mainly viticulture. Horticulture includes production of fruits, flowers and vegetables called truck farming. When you talk about viticulture, viticulture is mainly production of grapes and manufacturing wine called viticulture. So, well developed viticulture in the cities like Turin, Milan, Genoa, Florence, Florence, Rome and Naples. These are well known cities for viticulture and production of grapes. Then France, France having a unique geographical location, friends are do like to mention that in southern part of France having the coast of Mediterranean Sea and with the help of uh, Gibraltar Strait and in the west and the Suez Canal in the east, this country is well connected through the sea routes around the globe. In the west coast there are Bay of Biscay part of the Atlantic Ocean and in the north English Channel, Dover Strait and the North Sea. Friends, France have been these uh, geographical locational benefits, it has a number of 
international seaports i'd like to mention in the south in the south uh, marcel marcel in the south that is in the gulf of lions in the mediterranean sea bordex bordex the port and which is very famous for the wine it is a wine port bordex and nantes city of brest le havre rouen and paris these are major ports paris no doubt it is in the interior but it is a major port in the river seine rouen and paris similarly other cities like metz nancy dijon orleans tours angers lyon these are the cities linked with the sea through the rivers and canals while city of toulouse toulouse and montpellier they are well connected through the midi canal called canal de midi in spain along the coast of mediterranean sea the major international seaport is barcelona across the gibraltar is cadiz and in the bay of biscay there are gijon and oviedo gijon and oviedo in portugal lisbon and oporto lisbon and oporto are the two major ports friends like bordeaux in france oporto which is situated on the river duro oporto is also wine port then coming to belgium the antwerp antwerp is the major port of belgium though ghent and brussels are also linked with canal through the sea but antwerp is the major port in netherlands rotterdam and amsterdam and den haag that's called hague rotterdam amsterdam and hague are the major ports in netherlands regarding rotterdam rotterdam lies in the delta of river rhine delta of river rhine friends rhine is a river which originates from the southern mountains and it drains out from switzerland germany also its tributary linked with the france luxembourg belgium and netherlands now see the countries switzerland france germany luxembourg belgium and netherlands all these countries use river rhine for inland navigation and in the delta of rhine is the port of rotterdam therefore rotterdam known as europort because many countries of europe continent having international trade with rotterdam therefore rotterdam is known as europort then in germany in germany the seaports like bremen hamburg and kiel bremen hamburg and kiel 
while river Elbe, river Weser, river Rhine running in such a way that entire Germany linked with these rivers and canals. Friends, right from Berlin to Bonn, Berlin to Bonn, interconnecting river Elbe, Weser and Rhine. These rivers and the cities like Berlin, Hanover, Dortmund, Essen, Cologne, Bonn, these are all linked with canal known as Metland Canal. Metland Canal connects Berlin to Bonn. Metland Canal connects rivers Elbe, Weser and Rhine. Therefore, you can see the cities which are interior in the country, but they are well connected with the sea through the rivers like river Rhine. River Rhine in the catchment of the river Rhine you can find the cities like Nuremberg, Stuttgart, Frankfurt, Bonn, Cologne, Essen and Dortmund, Bochum. Friends, the Right from Stuttgart, Nuremberg, Frankfurt, Bonn, Cologne, Essen, Bochum and Dortmund. All these cities lying in the basin of river Rhine and in Germany river Rhine basin is very very rich in iron ore and coal limestone. Friends, because of ingredients of the iron and steel industry found locally, river Rhine popularly known as Ruhr, river Ruhr, Ruhr basin and these cities because of steel having its technology, so have sequential industries from steel to automobile and Germany is one of the leading country in the world in the field of automobile and the Stuttgart, Frankfurt, Bonn, Cologne, Essen, Dortmund, Kassel these are all automobile city and all these are linked to the North Sea to the Rotterdam by river Rhine. Then Denmark, Denmark this is the country fairy country having number of small islands and these islands are linked with the shape with the ferry. Then in Poland Warsaw, Warsaw in the river Vistula. It is the inland port while in this coastal area Gdansk and Gdynia they are the major ports. In Russian detached land Kaliningrad in the port city then Baltic states have uh, sea ports and while in the western part of the Russia St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg earlier it was called Leningrad, St. Petersburg the major port in the Gulf of Finland and in Russia on the Kola Peninsula is Murmansk, Murmansk port. Friends at this latitude this is the frost area. If you go to the eastern part of Russia on the same latitude is permanent frost, but being the north of Arctic circle you can see this is Arctic circle this dot line and Murmansk port lies north of the Arctic circle. Even then it is all weather port this all weather port because of the Norwegian warm current 
this region well covered with the warm current. So, it remain open throughout the year. Then Norway and Sweden, in Sweden Stockholm, Malmo, Stock, Stockholm the largest port of Sweden, Malmo and Helsing, Helsingborg, Gothenburg their major ports in Sweden and in Norway Oslo, Oslo, Bergen and Bodo in the north Hammerfest. Friends, the northern part the Norway lies north of the Arctic Circle. Therefore, in the summer season, in the summer season, hardly there is half an hour night, almost 23 and half hours a day. Friends, you know, in the midnight at 12 o'clock, at 2, 2 p.m., 2 a.m., at 11.30 p.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., midnight, you can see the sun. That is why Norway known as land of midnight sun. Norway land of midnight sun. Then coming to the southern part and eastern part of Europe, there, is, there are few important ports in Black Sea called Odessa, this is the port of Ukraine and also, little part of Turkey lies in Europe continent, Istanbul is the major city, major port of Turkey. Friends, entire Europe continent or developed continent, but Turkey is little developing nature. Therefore, this part of Turkey known as sick man of Europe, sick man of Europe. Turkey, major part of Turkey lies in Asia continent and minor part lies in Europe. So, it is Eurasian country like Russia, Turkey. Then in the Greece, Athens is the major seaport and uh, then Yugoslavian countries, Yugoslavian countries lying on the sea coast having many seaports. Friends, after this, I would like to show you once the fiscal map and can find the which are the important rivers and their importance. So, the most important fact I would like to mention you can see here in the north drains river Rhine, in the south river Rhone, along the Rhone and Rhine. These are the longest rift valley, fault valley of Europe continent. This is known as Rhine Rhone Rift, Rhone Rhine Rift. And this fault developed in such a manner that from the central mountains, that Rhine fault drains northern slope and Rhone fault drains southern slope. Rhine and Rhone are nearest at the city near the boundary of France and Germany. The city known as city of Maine. So, Maine situated on both the bank of river Rhine and Rhone and Rhine and Rhone are linked with the canal passing through the main therefore, it is also very famous called main canal. Then in France, see the rivers in the France in the north river draining, river Seine while this is river Rhine driving northward, Seine, river Loire. River Garonne 
and river Rhone. Friends, all these rivers are interlinked and uh, the city situated along the in between these rivers they are situated along the canal and they are well navigated. River Garonne and Rhone are linked with Midi Canal. This is called Canal de Midi or Midi Canal. Then this is the longest river of Europe continent called Danube. River Danube and I would like to mention you that this is the river passing through seven countries and having five national capitals along with River Danube. So, River Danube originates from Switzerland, it passes through Germany, passing through Germany, then it enters in Austria where the first national capital is Vienna. Then it enters in Slovakia, its capital Bratislava on river Danube. Then it enters in Hungary and the capital of Hungary Budapest. Then river Danube turns southward, it enters in Serbia, Serbia, Kosovo, Serbia and it is a Belgrade capital situated on river Danube. Then from Serbia it enters in Romania its capital Bucharest and finally from Romania it drains in Black Sea. Friends, this is a kind of indicator you can find that one river passing through seven countries and there is no conflict. Among all the countries the river have same name unlike the developing countries like South Asia. I would like to mention here in South Asia there is one river passing through three countries and known with seven different regional names. River Sangpo, River Brahmaputra, River Dhyang, River Siang, River Jamuna, River Padma and River Meghna. So, one river having seven names in three countries here in Europe continent one river passing through seven countries have only one name Danube and having five national capital located on the bank of river Danube. I would like to mention this capital again number one is Vienna that is Austria, number two Bratislava that is Slovakia, number three Budapest that is Hungary, number four Belgrade that is in Serbia Kosovo region and finally the Bucharest in Romania. So, Danube is the longest river and now I would like to mention that you can see the physical map the Danube and river Rhine. Now, see this is river Danube draining in the east and here is river Rhine draining in the northwest. Friends, now Rhine Danube Canal, these two rivers have been interlinked, Rhine and Danube are interlinked. Now, you can see the importance, you can see the importance that a ship passing from North Sea now can enter in Europe continent crossing through the river Rhine, through the river Danube and can easily enter in Black Sea. This way 
most of all the rivers of Europe continent are well linked with. Apart from these uh, physical and uh, political map, now I would like to mention you the importance of the British Isles and the ports of the British Isles. You can find that in the right in the 19th century and 20th century most of the industries were developed in the interior like London like uh, uh, interior Birmingham, Sheffield, Glasgow friends in the end of the 20th century and now in 21st century most of the most of the mineral resources of the interior of the Europe of the uh, British Isles in UK exhausted. Therefore, most of the industries today based on imported raw material. Therefore, the policy have changed. The location of industries have changed. The industries which were in the interior of the country are now located in the port based. So, there are inter port trading port based industries I can see you can see on the map right from the the right uh, see that in total in this is a uh, Scotland and in the Scotland the west coast apart from the Glasgow Motherwell Greenock Pasley these are satellite towns of Glasgow and industries developed along the coastal area while along the eastern part of the Scotland there are Aberdeen, Aberdeen, Dundee and Edinburgh. Aberdeen, Dundee and Edinburgh they are major industries and ports along the eastern slope of Scotland. Then in England eastern coast of England the major ports and the industrial cities are Newcastle, Southfield, Sunderland, Hartlepool, Stockton, Middlesbrough and Kingston. In the south by the Plymouth, Portsmouth and in the west find Bristol, Cardiff, Swansea, Manchester, Liverpool. Friends, earlier these industries were developed in the Leeds, Derby, Birmingham and other cities. So, there is impact of globalization and that begins from British Isles UK. Friends, this way we had covered the fiscal map, political map, I also discussed some industries, importance of industries, the city, port cities and uh, its trade impact. So, I would like to conclude any question, any query regarding the map of Europe continent, I will be happy to reply you. Thank you very much. On that note, I would like to thank sir for this very interesting discussion and I hope that you, my dear friends, that have found this lecture very enlightening. On that note, I would like to thank you dear friends for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you. Thank you.